Hello and welcome to another uh, tutorial from Mike Dolan Games. I'm going to show you a quick way to switch vehicles in Unreal Engine 4 using blueprints. Um, so basically uh, to set up you just need a project with the flying blueprint and then you're also going to um, add the third person controller to it. Um, to do that you can just go up to the add feature or content pack um, here and just select third person and add it to the projects real quick. Okay, so we're gonna have a flying blueprint and we're also gonna have a third person character in here as well. And um, I'm actually gonna make a another um, flying ship. So if I go into my flying blueprint here, oh, I know what I'm gonna do, yep. And uh, I'm just going to uh, right click on my flying pawn and I'm going to create a child class and um, I'm going to call this um, flying pawn um, uh, uh, let's call it a pilot bull okay um, just something to differentiate it from the original and then I'm going to actually create a, another child class of this one, and I'm just going to call this one red. And uh, we'll just have different uh, versions here. So um, if I open up the flying pawn palatable, I'm going to, in the viewport, I'm just going to add a component to the, ba to the, the base here. And we're just looking for the box collision. All right. And now we have a collision box around here. And I'm going to bump this up to, let's see, what does 100 look like? I'm going to do 150, and then 150, and that's on the box extent. Okay, so now we have this big box around here. And if you scroll down, um, we want to just make sure that it's just overlap dynamic. Okay, uh, we don't want it to block. We just want it to be like a, um, a trigger volume. All right, so once we have that, we can uh, save, compile, and save. And uh, we're just going to open up our child class of this one, which is red. And uh, you'll see there's already our triggerable box. And uh, another thing I did earlier, just to save time, is I created a material. It's just a red material. It's literally just a vector param. It's red, plugged into the base. Um, so if I select this, then I go to our... Um, uh, palatable red, and I click on my plane mesh, and I can uh, change the color to red. Okay, compile, save. Now I have two different um, flying pawns. I have a blue one and a red one. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete this pawn, and I'm going to add our palatable in and our red palatable in here. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the same type of box to our third person controller. So just open up your third person character blueprint, go to viewport. Um, we have our capsule collider, uh, just like the top most part. We're not going to mess with our capsule collider. We're going to add our own box volume. So just box collision. Then um, you can name this something fancy if you want. Um, and we'll make this 150, 150. 150. Okay. And now uh, we have a collision box around our, or a uh, interactable box around our third person character. Okay. Um, and you can see we have all of these now in here. Okay. So we have to get pretty close to interact, but uh, these should work. All right. The next thing we need to do is um, create a blueprint class. And we're just gonna we're gonna do this all on the player controller. So um, there's other places you could do this. You can do this on the level blueprint um, as well, um, or uh, on each character. But uh, this is one way you can do it. Um, so I'm just gonna call this a player pilot controller. All right. So now I have this player pilot controller. And I'm going to open it up. All right. And if we go to our event graph here, this is where we're going to 
um, to some of the interaction that we need to do. And so I'm putting it here because I want it to be generalized. I don't want it to be on each individual vehicle right now. And um, there are other ways to make this like a component or something, but um, this is a quick way to do it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an input key. So I'm just going to look for the letter E. Uh, this is always hard to find. I forget what the actual shortcut is for this. Or how about um, input event? Here we go. So input event, and then I'm just going to do the letter E. Okay, so now we have our control. You can do this in your project settings and input and create an actual interact if you want. Um, but we're just going to do it this way for now. So now we're going to do a branch. Okay. And uh, the branch is conditional because we just want to make sure that we are actually interacting with something. Um, so we're going to get our player pawn. So we're using the player controller right now. So we need to get the pawn that we're connected to. Um, and then from here, we can get overlapping actors. Now you can make this event based as well. So um, if you were actually doing this on the player pawn, you could have an overlap event um, and save that. Um, so this way, we're kind of doing this search anytime we press this button. Um, OK. Uh, so now inside the overlapping actors, I'm just going to get the first one. So just get a copy here. We'll just do zero. OK. This might want to cycle through depending on what they're um, what you're trying to do, but um, hopefully you're just interacting with one thing at a time. Um, the next thing we're going to do is just make sure that there's something here is valid. And so there's actually, I think, let me double check what this one does. Actually, this is great. Um, we won't even use the branch. I think this should work just fine. Um, you could also use the other one, which is a function that tells you whether it's true or false. Um, so if it's valid, we are going to do something called cast to pawn. I believe I need to do this because this is an actor, not a pawn, even though it's... Oh, I had to do that too. Um, so anyway, we're going to cast the pawn here. I'm going to put this here like that. And uh, I forgot one step. In this class filter, you can just select actor um, or a pawn. So type in pawn. And this will basically any anything with a base class of pawn, this will grab. So instead of like every single thing you're uh, overlapping on, it's just going to see if there's anything that's a pawn. And so our flying pawn is a pawn and our third person character is a pawn. So, um, so now we're going to cast the pawn because we can possess pawns. Okay. So now we can do possess. All right, and when we possess this, and so this cast, we're going to drag into the in pawn, and the target is going to be self because um, it's the player um, controller that's going to possess things. So we are in the player controller, so um, we don't have to actually grab the player controller. If you were doing this somewhere else, like on a on the actual vehicle, you would have to grab the player controller and put that in here for possess. But since we're on the player controller, we don't need to. So now, anytime we overlap with something and we press E. We will check to see if it's valid, if it's a pawn, and we'll possess it. Uh, all right, so now we have these three things. And um, I think we're currently, if I go into world settings, I'm in flying mode, which means we're going to generate some sort of um, flying person. So I'm going to switch that to third person game mode. And I'm going to get my, and inside here, I'm going to do an override so that my player controller is my pilot. And I'm just going to press my arrow to switch it to that one. OK, and the final thing I'm going to do, uh, since I have my three vehicles here, I don't want to add um, another one. So inside, I wonder if I can do it from here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, in here, you can actually select it. And you can set this on the actor itself. But um, right here, if you search for possess, it says auto possess player. It's currently disabled. So we're just going to set this to true for now. OK, 
Um, save that. Uh, final tweak we need to make to our pilotable flying pond. So just grab the blue one. Uh, we want to go into our. Ah, we have to. Okay, so actually, um, we have to do it in our base class. So go to blueprints. Go to the original flying pond. Open that up. Go to uh, minimum speed. Put it down to zero. Uh, basically, I'm changing the variables because uh, the flying pond is set to automatically move. Um, the current forward speed is already set to 500, so we're going to set it down to zero so that it stays stationary. So now our minimum speed can be zero, and our um, current speed is zero. That means that it's going to sit in place, and when you get in it, it's not going to automatically jump to 500 or whatever the minimum speed is. So we'll save that. This change will now be reflected in here as well. Um, okay, so now our flying pawns should not fly away. Okay, so we walk over, press E, and now we're flying. And you have to hold down shift to move your guy now. All right, and if we fly over to our other one, well, here's what I'll do. I'll fly over to our, uh, our guy, and as I crash into him, now I've jumped out. Now you might want to set it up so that when you press E when you're flying around, you just jump out. Um, and now I'm in my other one. So there you go. That's how you can switch between different things. And you can chase after this guy who's, who's stopped here. Now you might also want to set it up so that as soon as you exit the vehicle, it stops. So you're not like having your ship fly around. Um, but there you go. I hope that was useful. Um, and not too disjointed, but a uh, pretty simple way. Obviously, you might want to build this into your systems and things like that. Um, but this is one quick way to do it. All right, hope that was helpful. Uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks.